No. No. It's probably a good thing, huh? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Okay, what's this? No, that's a circle. What's that? Okay, watch. I told you, and I'll never forget it. It was a Wednesday. I told you that cells store a little bit of ATP, right? So I like hot pockets. Who likes hot pockets? Okay, you're getting extra credit, Latyra. Are you eating a hot pocket right now? What are you eating? <laughs> You know, I do that too. I bit my lip over here, right? Like if I start, if I don't shave, then I'll start biting a hair on it, and then I wake up and I'm like, man, I got a sore lip. That ain't right. <laughs> okay, so if you put on quiz number two, I like hot pockets, I'll give you extra credit. Oh, did I tell you to put that on there too? It's amazing how you remember that stuff. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> what? Well, who won? Well, it's too late now. Right. Yeah, let me just, yeah, let's worry about this first, okay? Then we'll worry. And look, I always throw a little buffer in there. If you added up the points on your test, right, you knew there was a little buffer in there. Do you understand that? Right? So t Timmy gets it. Just don't get on my central nervous system. Here we go. My advanced class got on my central nervous system, so I let them have it. Right? It was bad for them. Huh? Yes. Yeah. I don't care. Administration knows how I talk to you guys. They do. Right? Students who take my class are successful. That's all they care about. What I say, who cares? As long as you're doing your job, Timmy, we'll leave you alone. Ready? Who's ready now? Okay, watch. Cells store a little ATP, right? right? Watch. If a cell needs to use the ATP, which ATP are they going to use first? And what's most readily available? No. The ATP. The AT right, that's all we got right here. <laughs> the ATP inside the cell first, right? The stored ATP. So if the cells use ATP, they're going to use the stored first. Say yes. And how do you use it? You break off that third phosphate, and that releases some energy. Say yeah. So what do you start to build up inside the cell? ADP. And what's the most powerful stimulator of the enzymes of metabolism? The buildup of ADP inside a cell, right? Well, you, uh, you. Say yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So watch. And in this class, for simplification, it's either on or off. There's no gray area. You got me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you just repeat that one sentence? It's the biggest trigger of... It's the metabolism. biggest stimulator of the enzymes of metabolism. Right? So how does a cell know that you need to try to uh, pop on that third phosphate to ADP, ADP is building up in the cell because you're using ATP, right? Tell me that makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Right. So if your whole body is doing nothing, not a thing, right? Are you going to, are you using any ATP? No. no. 
So if you're not using ATP, what won't you build up inside the cell? So what will happen to metabolism throughout your body? It goes way down. You ain't doing nothing. Say yeah. And I told you that free-floating glucose in a cell will what? Kill you. It will kill you. That's bad. Right? You want to go to Gateway. There we go. And if I didn't tell you this, I'm telling you this now. Everything you put into your pie hole that gets digested and absorbed goes where first? It goes to the liver first. So if your blood sugar is high and you are metabolically inactive, that sugar, that high blood sugar, what up, G? Right? With insulin around, who's with me? Yeah? That excess glucose is going to go to the liver. Who's following? And it gets converted to glucose chemically bonded together and stored with water. And what's that called? That's called glycogen. So the stored form of glucose is called glycogen. All right? Who's with me? Can you store glycogen in an unlimited amount? No. 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 Right? So this is the criteria that has to be met. Number one. If you are metabolically inactive, you're sitting on your fatty acid, yes? You're metabolically inactive. You're not doing anything. Number two, your blood sugar is elevated. You got me? Because you're eating sugar. And number three, can you store an unlimited amount of glycogen in your liver? No, right? You can't. And your glycogen levels are full. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Glycogen's full. And I remember going over this. says, full up, tinky winky. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. If your glycogen levels are full, this is the kicker, any excess glucose will go to the liver, and that excess glucose gets converted to fat. And then that fat gets stored in fat cells. And you can be as fat as you want to be. Say yes. So these three criteria have to be met. Bam. Did I do that? All right. So uh, listen up because this is true. I like you guys as far as you know, okay? So the CPR question, that's going to be on there. That, that's going to be on there. Do you understand? Is there a question about the byproducts of metabolism? There isn't on that one, is there? Okay. And are you with me? And the slim fast question, listen up, that's going to be extra credit. Are you following? And the enzyme question, that's going to be on there too, right? You kind of had a figure, right? The cell in its parts, you have to know that. Say yes. The functions of insulin and glucagon, you got to know that. The rest, I haven't decided. Tell me you got that. The metabolic pathway, you need to know that. I mean, cut it out. Am I right? Good. That's all I give you. That's all I give you. Anything else I can do for you? Look, it's supposed to snow this weekend, right? If everybody emails me their address, I'll come over and I'll snow blow you. Now, boom. Okay? Are you following? All right. 
So we're leaving metabolism alone. We're done with that. Say yeah. Okay. Write this down. Write this down. Never forget it. Ready? Anybody know the byproducts of metabolism? Carbon dioxide, water, what else? Heat. heat, that's very good, heat. What else? What else? Hydrogen ions and ADP. Don't water, yes. Uh, water, I made water little. Okay. You better tattoo those someplace. Right? If I see you, you better, like, someplace other than this class. Right? At Pick and Save or Festival Foods. Now I ask you this, you don't tell me. I'm marking your whole life wrong. I don't even care if you graduated already. How many people followed that? You know, weirded me out yesterday. So in my advanced class, we're going over the cardiovascular system. So I did a 12 lead EKG, and a student wanted to have a 12 lead EKG done. So I'm like, look, you got to wear a sports bra, and then I'll show you how to prep yourself. So anyways, she had her belly button pierced. And as I'm doing that 12 lead EKG, I'm thinking about that, and my belly button was killing me. <laughs> like, you ever, like, take, like, a little Q-tip and clean out the, you know, the gunk in your belly button? You ever do that? Doesn't it feel weird? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right? So I can't imagine getting a needle. Th <laughs> Can I tell you something? Watch. And loosen up, because this is true. Life is painful enough. Why would you needlessly inflict pain on yourself? I do not even understand that. I saw this girl, right? She had like, like I counted them. I couldn't help myself. Twelve <laughs> rings in her bottom lip. <laughs> I know, right? And you see these dudes that do tattoos, right? They got tattoos, you know? They're like smoking a cigar. All right. Yeah, that needle's clean. Okay, tell me you got that, yes? Yes. Okay, so watch, watch. We talked about the cell, right? What's the different parts of the cell? How the cell makes energy, yes? What's the best way for the cell to make energy? Say it real loud. Aerobically. aerobically. And what do you need in order to make ATP aerobically? Oxygen. Oxygen. So to me, the next logical step in terms of you understanding how the body works is try to explain to you how the cells get oxygen. Say yeah. Yes. And that brings us to our discussion of the cardiovascular system. Who's with me? You got me? All right. So that's what we're going to do. We're going over the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system quiz is pretty, pretty, right? There's a lot of questions and stuff. Say yeah. So that's going to be all by itself. There will be no questions from quiz one or quiz two on the cardiovascular quiz. It will be all by its lonesome. Say yeah. Okay? Don't worry. I'll get you on the midterm, right? <laughs> and I always do. You're okay? You're, you're following me, guys? Who's with me? All right. So that's where we're going to begin. Hey, hang on. Maybe we will.
How many people printed off the cardiovascular quiz? Too bad. Here we go. Question number one on your cardiovascular quiz is what are the functions of the cardiovascular system? Look. It says cardiovascular system, then it says the functions of the cardiovascular system. Then it has one, two, three, four. Say yeah. And we know, right? So the big function of the cardiovascular system is to transport nutrients down to the cells so they can do what they do, oxygen being one, and then removing metabolic waste. And the big one they got to get rid of is carbon dioxide, right? <clears throat> and then we learned, too, that it helps maintain body temperature, right? We talked about that. And then finally, it helps maintain the pH of the blood. <clears throat> Anybody here working in an emergency room? Cardio, uh, uh, cardiac unit? McDonald's? <laughs> All right, so those are the functions of the cardiovascular system. Who, who's following this? Yeah? All right. Just so you know, I'm recording this so it will show up on the video. Say, say yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. I got to show you this first. What's this? I'm going to show you a little video on the cardiovascular system. I like... Uh, looking at this when I have time, and then I rock back and forth. You ever do that? If you take yourself a video of you looking at the, the cardiovascular system video, rocking back and forth, I'll give you extra credit. Yeah, you got to post it to YouTube. How much? <laughs> See? Right, right, how much? Wow, that's kind of disturbing. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yep. All right, don't you worry. I'm going to find it. Okay, here we go. Reggie? Okay, watch. Your heart is... Oh, it's a pump, all right. Okay, we're close to Valentine's Day, are we not? Ah, Yeah, that's so nice. Okay, so write this down. What does cardi mean? Heart. Heart. What does vascular mean? That's very good. So the cardiovascular system consists of the heart... What's the heart made out of? Muscle. muscle. What are the two things muscle can do? Contract and relax. What a boring life. You text muscle, what are you doing? Contract it. Right? Then you text a few minutes, later, what are you doing? Relaxing. Chilling out, relaxing, relaxing, playing some b-ball out by the school. We a couple of guys. <laughs> Here we go. And vascular blood vessels, you better get this. And in the cardiovascular system, you have two types of blood vessels. What are they? That's right. You got arteries. And you have veins. You better get this. Right? Capillaries are not part of the blood vessels. They are. That's where the two, where arteries and veins meet. That's why it's called circulation. It's a circle. Circulation. Here we go. 
Now watch. In the strictest of sense, by definition, arteries take blood away from the heart. What do you think veins do? Veins take blood to the heart. Okay, for extra credit, okay, extra credit, how many hearts do you have? How many? How'd you know? <laughs> oh, did I for real? Well, too late now. You should have asked. Here, I'll give you plus five on the cardiovascular. See, you should have asked ahead of time. There you go. You got two hearts. Are you following me? And they beat as one. You know what? I'm going to get my girlfriend for Valentine's Day. Whatever she tells me to get. See, that way she's not disappointed. That works. Okay, ready? Got two hearts. Watch. Two hearts. You have number one. You have a right heart. And the, you better write this down. The right heart collects all the venous blood. What's venous blood? Describe it. Describe venous blood. Describe it. I'm waiting. That's right. Venous blood, by definition, is high in carbon dioxide and low in oxygen. And it's less filling. High in oxygen. Whoops. High in CO2. Low in O2. Where does the right heart pump the blood to? It's already in the heart. Yeah, where does the right heart pump all that venous blood to? It pumps it to the lungs. Say yes. Then, in the lungs, right? What do you do in the lungs? You blow off your carbon dioxide and you take on oxygen. Say yes. And all that newly oxygenated blood now comes to the second part of the heart which would be what? The left heart, because you had a right heart. And the left heart pumps blood that's high in oxygen, low in CO2, right? It pumps it down to cells of the body. Say yeah. Uh, are you with me? Guys? Okay. So watch. What's the goal of the body? That's right. Watch. When we talk about each unit now, each system, the goal of the cardiovascular system, the goal of the cardiovascular system is to maintain blood flow. And now, because you're going to be learning stuff and you're going to be working in healthcare, anytime you see flow, anytime you see this letter, big Q, it means flow. Air flow, in this case, we're talking blood flow. Say, yeah. What's the most important part of the body to maintain blood flow to? How soon we forget. The core of the body. 
And that's part of the core. Right? Say yeah. So your body will sacrifice non-essential parts of the body to maintain blood flow to the core. That's why if you're bleeding your own blood, and nobody makes me bleed my own blood. If you're bleeding your own blood really bad, your skin will start to get pale, right? Because you're cutting off blood flow to non-essential parts to make sure the blood flow goes to the core. Say yes. See how that works? Tell me you got that. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by maintaining blood flow. True or false, if you exercise, you require more blood flow to your muscles. Good, that's true. So that means the cardiovascular system has to pump more blood to the muscles. And if the cardiovascular system is unable to maintain that blood flow, bad things happen to you, right? Like you pass out, fall down, crack your head, boom. Say yes. Okay. All right. Now watch. Watch. The average adult, average adult, mini me, less, Shaquille O'Neal, more. But the average adult pumps about 5,000 cc's of blood per minute. And 5,000 cc's is 5 liters per minute. Tell me you got that. So each minute you are circulating oxygenated blood to the cells of your body at a rate of about five liters per minute. I got to tell you, man, you got to go to Barbacat. They have fun. They eat food, cut hair, and they giggle. How many people got that? Okay, here we go. What, uh, cutting hair? Yes. Yeah. No. I like it. Ready? Okay, watch. Watch. Look at that. Right heart. Left heart. Left side of the heart, right side of the heart. Tell me you got that. Okay, watch. Better get this. Which side of the heart pumps more blood? The right or the left? That's right. Then a student last night got mad at me. Why would you ask that question then if it's the same? I go, because I want you to think. And that's a four-letter word in school, thinking. That's four letters. Too. Watch. Write this down. The right and left. And it's a question on the quiz, too. And you didn't print it off. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Yeah, you don't care. Everything's a joke. Ready? The right side of the heart and the left side of the heart pump exactly the same amount of blood. If they don't, you have a condition called congestive heart failure. Have you ever heard of congestive heart failure? Say what? Yeah. Have you ever heard of congestive heart failure? Yep. So watch. They both pump the same amount of blood. Which side of the heart works harder and why? The left side of the heart works harder. It works about five times harder than the right side. So if you're going to have problems on one side of the heart or the other, which side is going to give you the problems? The left side. So when they say somebody had a heart attack, they're almost always talking about the left side of the heart. Say yes, yes. With someone like DHS, why are you more concerned with like a daily weight in a uh, three pound weight gain up or down in like three days and then like five or what, why are you so concerned with their weight? 
People with congestive heart failure want to look good. And if they start gaining weight, they just don't look good. So they're concerned. No, I'll, I'm going to explain that to you. Okay, watch. 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 He's looking up your old address. all I wanted to show you. <laughs> Watch. If you drink Diet Mountain Dew, the water that's in the Diet Mountain Dew gets absorbed into my bloodstream. Tell me you got that. I, uh, would you agree with that? And anytime you increase the amount of fluid in your bloodstream, your arteries and veins, that makes your blood pressure go up. And anytime your blood pressure goes up, it makes the kidneys make more urine. That's why with your alkaline water and electrolytes, when you drink that, you have to pee. Tell me you got that. A person with congestive heart failure, their heart is failing, so when they drink fluid, it gets absorbed into the bloodstream, but their heart is too weak to increase the pressure, so they don't make urine, so they retain water. And if you're in an hospital, what happened there? If you're in a hospital, people don't gain weight eating hospital food. So the only way that they could gain weight is by retaining fluid. And the more fluid you retain, the worse your heart failure. That's why they do it. And that's why people with congestive heart, can they drink as much water as they want? No. There's a little, you got a little, little cup there. This is all you can have, Jasper. Ain't that right? <laughs> No, <laughs> no. Uh, reading the textbook. Um, yeah, you don't want them to ambulate a lot, and I'll tell you why, because then that will make their uh, congestive heart failure worse, and they have more fluid volume because water's getting sucked out of the cells, making their blood volume go up. So what you need is some more insulin. So you need to call the doctor, wake them up. That's why they get paid the big bucks. Say, hey, got to lower dude's blood sugar. Tell me you got that. Guys? Okay, so watch. Which side of the heart pumps more blood, the right or the left? Good. Which side works harder, right or left? Left. left. Why? It has to pump oxygenated blood to all the body. The right side pumps deoxygenated blood just to the lungs. Say ya. Okay. You need to get this. If you get this right, I'm going to be real proud of you. Well, not really. Well, you should know it. Okay, here we go. Now get this, come on, for real, watch. There's two circulations, two systems of circulation. Number one, you have the pulmonary circulation. And the pulmonary circulation, as the name implies, circulation. Sends blood that's high in CO2 and low in O2, right? Venous blood. It sends that to the lungs, right? So the pulmonary circulation is in the lungs. And we just, we were just, I just explained it to you. The right side of the heart does that, okay? Then you got the left side of the heart, right? That's referred to as the 
systemic circulation. And the systemic circulation, right, that pumps blood. that's high in oxygen, low in CO2, to the cells of the body. Are you with me? Okay. Now, I'm telling you this for a fact. I'm going to describe for you right now systolic and diastolic blood pressure. If you get this wrong, your whole cardiovascular quiz is wrong. There's no way you leave this class not knowing this. Let's say, for example, that you got through nursing school not knowing this. Then you become a nurse, you take a patient's blood pressure, and they say, hey, what do those numbers mean? And you go, I don't know, I got that one wrong. <laughs> You're going to know this. Are you with me? Okay. So when a blood pressure is measured, you're measuring it in the arteries of the body. And what artery is used to measure blood pressure? The brachia, right? Right, remember? Guess where this artery is? Guess what this artery is? The brachial artery. That's why I had to learn those body parts. <laughs> See? There's a reason for everything. Tell me you got that. What's the heart made out of? What are the two things that muscle can do? That's very good. Here we go. So watch. When the left side of the heart contracts, it exerts a pressure in the arteries as blood is being pushed, oxygenated blood is being pushed down to the cells of the body. So when the left side of the heart contracts and pushes oxygenated blood down to the cells of the body, the pressure that's measured in those arteries is called your systolic blood pressure. Yeah. Guys, get this now. Is there any pressure in the systemic arteries when the heart relaxes? I don't know. Is there yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. On the cardiovascular quiz, true false. You got me? For 30 points of extra credit for everybody. Got me? True or false? True or false? There is no pressure in the systemic arteries when the left side of the heart's relaxed. True or false? False. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you got that right. I should have asked a harder question. Yeah. Yeah, right. Watch. Do you see everyone pick up that pen? <laughs> Listen up, because this is true. What's the heart made out of? When the heart contracts and pushes blood through the systemic arteries, it's measured with a blood pressure cuff and a stethoscope, and that's called your what? Systolic blood pressure. What's normal systolic blood pressure measured in the left brachial artery? 120 millimeters of mercury. 
Is there any pressure in the systemic arteries when the left side of the heart relaxes? Yes, there is. And that pressure is called your diastolic pressure. Say yes. What's normal diastolic pressure? 80, 80 millimeters of mercury. <laughs> so when you write a blood pressure, you write systolic blood pressure over diastolic blood pressure. Say yeah. Now when you take somebody's blood pressure, you can say, hey, I know what that means. Tell me you got that. Guys? Yes or no? Okay. Why do you measure blood pressure in the left arm? You got a brachial artery in your right arm too. Cut it out. It's closer to the heart. That's why you wear your wedding ring on your left hand. It's closer to the heart. Oh. <laughs> did you know that? Yeah. As a what? Uh -huh. When you take a blood pressure, like if your cup, if the person's starting with a cup, you can take it in your forearm. Is that what you're Yes. Accurate? Yes. Okay. Yes. The, now, that's a good point. It was a nice segue. Ready? What happens to the pressure of the blood in the systemic arteries as they get? farther and farther away from the left side. The pressure should go down. down. That's very good. That's very good. How many people follow that? That's why when you get these wrist blood pressure cuffs or the Fitbit that measures your blood pressure, you're making up those numbers, man. All they do is have a computer that randomly gives you blood pressure. You don't care. That's a joke, right? And I don't know if you know this, but I invented blood pressure eight years ago when I was eating supper. I was eating some meatloaf. Ready? Who cares? Watch. What happens to the size of the arteries as you move farther and farther away from the left side of the heart, they get, right, look, this circle is bigger than that, than this one. Say, yeah. Then, what's the smallest blood vessel you have? And how thick is a capillary? How thick is, or what kind of blood is carried down to the cells of the body? Blood that's high in what? Oxygen. So <laughs> watch. When a little left ventricle or a little left side of the heart contracts, it sends that oxygenated blood down to the cells of the body. That blood is high in oxygen. Say yes. Yes. And then you got the little mitochondria with the electron transport chain. And in order for aerobic metabolism to continue, you have to continually place that oxygen. Say yes. No, no, and I'm not telling you which ones get more or less. You know why? Because when I see you, maybe at Pick and Save or Festival Foods, I can think to myself, I know something that she doesn't, and that makes me feel better about myself. Where, what's a byproduct of metabolism? I'm, yep, I, right there, right, I'm circling it. Where's CO2 highly concentrated? Where is it? Right. Where does it want to go? So at the, watch it, at the point that oxygen leaves the capillary and sits at the end of the electron transport chain and CO2 leaves the cell and goes into the blood, arterial blood becomes... Say yes. 
Say yes. Where do all the veins of the body dump their venous blood? Into what part of the heart? The Where do all the, write this down, all the veins of the body dump their venous blood into the right side of the heart? Where do all the veins of the body dump their venous blood? Right side of the heart. Where does the right side of the heart pump the blood? To the lungs. What do you do in the lungs? Okay. Right? You take on oxygen and you blow off carbon dioxide. Say, yeah. Okay, here we go. Watch. Very important. Very important. What happens to the pressure in the systemic arteries? Come on. Why isn't this working? Wait. As it moves farther and farther away from the left side and gets closer and closer to the cell, what happens to that pressure? It goes down. So listen up, because this is true. You better write this down. I'm not writing it down. I got degrees. In the arterial end of the capillary, the pressure is about 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury. How thick is a capillary? That's right. So can a one cell thick membrane handle a lot of pressure? So watch. If normal systolic blood pressure is 120, and let's say that all of a sudden you got high blood pressure and your blood pressure goes up to 240, what's going to happen to the pressure in the capillaries? It's going to go up. And if you start busting capillaries in your brain, you end up drooling out of the side of your mouth. You end up with a stroke. If you start busting capillaries in your kidneys, you end up on dialysis. That's why high blood pressure would be bad for you. How many people got that? Okay. Write this down. Never forget it. Tattoo it backwards on your forehead for 150 points of extra credit. It has to be permanent. Ready? Where do all the veins of the body dump their venous blood? The right side of the heart. Write this down. I, I'm not even kidding. I'm writing it down. Let's see. I'm going to write it down in white. Okay. Can you see that? I can. There is no pressure in the systemic veins. There is no pressure in the systemic veins. We should start, we should get a song together. Is there any pressure in the systemic veins, Lena? No. Say yeah. You're going to get this.
Is my big toe alive? Yes. So is oxygenated blood from the left side of my heart going down there to feed my toe? Yes. That's very good. So after gases are exchanged at the level of the capillary, who's following this? It becomes venous blood. Is there any pressure in the veins? Yes. I just wrote that right here. Look. No, there is no pressure. No pressure. No. So how does that venous blood get back to the right side of the heart? How does it? How does it get back? How does it get back? Here we go. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Listen up, because this is true. How many people? Um, how many people work in a hospital? Where do you work? And they have surgery and stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. You better. Yeah. You better remember that. Okay, ready? Okay, wait. You're going to need to get any pressure in the systemic veins, yes or no? Watch it. Watch it. Write this down. I'm not even kidding. Write this down. I'm not writing it down. I refuse. Watch. The largest veins of your body, write this down. The largest systemic veins of your body are deep inside muscle, specifically your leg muscles. Where are the largest veins of the body? That's right. Is there any pressure? In the systemic veins. No, no. How many people like those freezy pops? Remember when you were a kid, your mom would get those? You put them in the freezer, right? Yeah. And then you check every five minutes, right? And then like, not done, not done. Then you forget about them. Then you wake up in the morning, hey, freezy pop. I like the purple ones, right? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Did you give him a dirty look? <laughs> yeah, when we burst into flames. <laughs> nice. So watch. You bite off the plastic, right? And then you start at the bottom and you'd squish it, right? But if you let it go, it would fall all the way back down like, oh. <laughs> Your veins work like that. Watch. In the systemic veins, in the systemic veins, you have veins have one-way valves. And those one-way valves only open up towards the heart. Where are the largest veins of your body? Where in the legs? Deep inside the muscle. Say yes. So when you get up and you walk, when you get up and walk, you will squish the veins. And when you squish the veins, you force open, watch it, those one-way valves. And those one-way valves will push that venous blood back to the heart. Is that, so, is that how you get varicose veins? Yes. Varicose veins are when you stand up and the weight of that venous blood, because you're not moving, puts pressure on those valves and stretches them out. That's why they look like kind of ratty and nasty looking. 
Those are varicose veins. The valves get all stretched out. Say, yeah. You ever see them? Who's with me? Watch. What's, what's the most painful surgery for me, anyway? What's the most painful surgery for people? Abdominal. abdominal surgery, right? So watch. How do people breathe after having abdominal surgery? <laughs> right? You know how that works, right? And do you want to get up and do the hokey pokey after you had abdominal surgery? Do you? No. no. So watch. Is there any pressure in the veins? <laughs> so better write this down. Venous blood that doesn't move. Venous blood that doesn't move. Clots. That's why after you have surgery, they stick this needle in your belly called lovenox. And that prevents your blood from clotting. Tell me you got that, guys. So when Nurse Ratchet comes in, and they want you to get your fatty acid up and ambulate, they're not doing that to be mean. They're doing that to save your life. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. Now watch. That's why when people come out of surgery, they got those big, like, air boots on. They're called sequential decompression devices. And they inflate and deflate to mimic you walking. Say yes. Here we go. I'm going to explain this. It's going to make perfect sense. Any pressure in the veins? No. What do veins have that systemic arteries don't? Systemic veins have them, but systemic arteries don't. One-way valves. One -way valves. And those one-way valves only open up towards the heart. the heart. Where are the largest veins of your body that store a lot of extra blood? Deep in the muscle of your legs. Say, yeah. Okay, here we go. How come this ain't working? What the? Okay, here we go. Watch. So dude's ambulating. Right? He's ambulating. And he's contracting and relaxing his muscle. And those little red blood cells start moving up towards the heart. Who's following this? Now watch. Watch. If you don't move and you ain't taking Lovenox, if you sit on your fatty acid long enough, that venous blood, because you're not contracting your legs, stays in your legs. And venous blood that don't move has a tendency to what? Clot. Clot. Say yeah. So watch. In this video, the clot appears to be a marsh marshmallow treat with certs in it. Got redson. That's a thrombosis, a blood clot. If a blood clot breaks free, it becomes an embolus. Say yes. Okay, now watch. Watch. Before you answer it, think. What happens to the diameter of the veins as they get closer and closer to the heart? They get bigger. Tell me you got that. Where does the right side of the heart pump the blood to? The lungs. Watch it. So here's dude, and he got this. This is no joke from not reading the textbook. Why is this doing this? Why is this doing this? But the, the clots forming on the hard side of the valve. 
it can form anywhere in that vein. No. Because it's closed There's other reasons those valves move. You got me? Watch. And as you get closer and closer to the heart, there's less and less valves. So when that clot breaks loose, the veins get bigger. So that clot is not going to break up. Uh, uh, block any of the veins on the way to the right side of the heart. Do you follow that? How many people are following this? Where does the right side of the heart pump its blood to? I'm going to ask it again. Where does the right side of the heart pump that venous blood to? The lungs. So watch. You got a clot here. When it breaks loose, it's going to not block any of the veins on the way back to the right side of the heart because the veins get bigger. But when that clot gets into the right side of the heart and it gets pumped to the lungs, what happens to the size of the vessels in the lungs? They get smaller. That's why a deep vein thrombosis causes a pulmonary embolus. How many people followed this? You didn't follow that? I mean, I see how it happens, but why does that give you a, I mean, why does that, is a pulmonary embolus, that's, that's a blood clot in the lung. In the, in the circulation of the lungs. And because look, look at the size of the blood vessels in the lungs. As you get deeper and deeper into the lungs, the blood vessels get smaller. So that blood clot is going to block vessels in the lungs. You need to understand this. Then what happens? Uh, if it's big enough, you die. Wait, so what do they have to do once you get that? What do they, they give you anticoagulants and drugs try, and try to um, break that clot up. Okay. If it's big enough, they will actually go in and try to remove the clot itself. Tell me you followed this. Yes or no? There you go. There you go. That's why if you ever watch uh, Cheaters or Maury, they'll say, we're the law offices of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, right? And if you had a inferior vena cava umbrella, and you suffer death, well, don't call us, you're dead. <laughs> so people who develop deep vein thrombosis, the worst outcome from that is a pulmonary embolus. So they will actually put a little clot catcher in the inferior vena cava. So when the clot starts moving up, it will be caught by that. And that little umbrella will actually have anticoagulant on it, and it will dissolve that clot. Why don't they put one in the upper part of the heart? Have you ever seen a person walk like this? You ever see that? And they don't use their arms at all, right, to just So because we use our arms all the time, the venous blood that's in our arms is constantly moving. But we're not always moving our legs, especially after surgery. That's why deep vein thrombosis occur in the lower extremities. Tell me you got that. That's why they do that. How many people followed this? Yes or no? You need to know the circulation of blood and the fact that there's no pressure in the veins. Tell me you got that. And that veins have one-way valves. Say yes. I'm going to ask it one more time. Is there any pressure in the veins? 
now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Which side of the heart pumps more blood? The right or the left? They pump the same amount. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is, I'm not even kidding. This is important. Watch, watch. What determines the amount of blood pumped by the right side of the heart? What's that? Not, no, no, not, you're not, you, are you pumping all of your blood through the arteries all the time? No, because if you were, if you like dug into your nose and you got like a bloody booger, you'd pass out because you lost blood. You have extra blood and that extra blood is stored in the veins of your legs. Tell me you got that. Because if you cut yourself and you bled a little bit and you needed that blood, you'd end up dying. So you can bleed a lot and still not die. Let's try it. Who wants to get cut really bad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See how long it takes you to bleed to death. Guys, how many people followed this? Now, what determines the amount of blood pumped by the right side of the heart? Don't even think, uh, I never ask a hard question. It's not hard. How much exercise you're doing? I'll give you that. It, uh, uh. How much CO2 in your blood? What determines the amount of blood pumped by the right side of the heart? How much is pumped by the left side? Nope, that's good thought, but nope. I'm going to give it to you. Anybody? But what I'm asking is, what determines the amount of blood pumped by the right side of the heart? I'm not telling you, ever. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You could get this. I know you can. Extra credit. <laughs> yeah. You should see now. Yeah. Ooh, give me that smartphone. I'm going to look that up. Yeah. I'll go to the library right now. Come on. God, I'm, I'm giving it to you. Right here. Right here. Right here. I'm telling you. What determines the amount of blood pumped by the right heart? What'd you say? The amount of venous blood returned to the right heart. The the right heart. <laughs> Guys, you better get this. What determines the amount of blood pumped by the right heart? No, she just said it. The amount of venous blood that's returned to it. Tell me you got that. Guys, yes or no? Okay, this is a hard one. You, get, you have to think. Now think. And don't think before you answer it. it hurts. I know. Yeah. I start getting a facial tick when I think. Okay, watch. The amount of venous blood returned to the right heart determines how much blood is pumped by the right heart. 
what determines the amount of blood pumped by the left heart? That, yeah, that's right. Don't say it, though, because you said it kind of complicated. I'm going to simplify it. You're right. Watch. The amount of blood pumped by the left heart is determined by the amount of blood pumped by the right heart. Because where does all the blood in the right heart go? To the lungs. And then all of that blood that was sent to the lungs by the right heart all of that blood comes back to the left heart and the left to the body. Say yes. Guys, so watch. And I'm going to, this is like, this is what they teach you in law school. They teach you how to think logically. Watch. Watch. What determines the amount of blood pumped by the right heart? The amount of venous blood returned to it. What determines the amount of blood pumped by the left heart? The amount of blood pumped by the right heart. Say yes. So if the amount of blood pumped by the right heart is determined by the amount of venous blood returned to it, and the amount of blood pumped by the right heart is equal to the amount of blood pumped by the left heart, the amount of blood pumped by the left heart is determined by the amount of venous blood returned to the right. Say yes. That's perfect logic. No one can argue with that. Do you understand that? Where does the left side of the heart pump the blood to? The body. Tell me you got, what's the goal of the body? That's the, that's the goal of the cardiovascular system. What's the goal of the body? What's the goal of the cardiovascular system? Maintain blood flow. What's the most important part of the body to maintain oxygenated blood flow to? Decor. Say yeah. You got me? Watch. Watch. And you guys watch MMA at all? Well, why not? If you take a video of yourself watching MMA or actually getting in the octagon and fighting. <laughs> when somebody gets choked out, you compress their carotid arteries. If you compress their carotid arteries, you will not send any oxygenated blood to the brain. And if you cut off that blood flow just momentarily, they pass out. As soon as you relieve the pressure, blood flow is reestablished. And they're like, hey, did I win? <laughs> Tell me you got that. Are you? Now watch. Get this now. Is there any pressure in the veins? Where do you store extra blood? Very good. Watch. Watch. If somebody takes a machete and hacks off your arm and blood starts spurtulating out, <laughs> tell me you got that. What's going to happen to the amount of blood in your cardiovascular system? So what's going to happen to the amount of blood coming back to the right side of the heart? There'll be less. So what does that mean in terms of the amount of blood going to the lungs? Less. So if there's less blood going to the lungs, there's going to be less oxygenated blood in the left heart. So what does that mean in terms of the amount of oxygenated blood going to the body? It's going to be less. Say yes. But where do you store extra venous blood? In your legs. Watch. This is Jimmy looking a little anorexic. <laughs> okay? If you stand up during the day, and most people are upright during the day, the 
depending on their profession. <laughs> Gravity keeps all that venous blood in your legs. Where do you store extra venous blood? In your legs. So if somebody's blood pressure is dropping, you lay them down and you lift their legs up because the extra blood that's stored in the veins will sit there unless you get gravity and assist. So that extra venous blood will now come back to the right side of the heart, say yes, and now you got more blood in the right side, more blood in the lungs, more blood to the left side, and more blood to your brain and vital organs. Do you follow that? That's why in a hospital, that's Spanish for hospital. When somebody's blood pressure drops, there's a little button at the bottom of the bed that puts them on their head. That's why you do that. <laughs> you know who will explain that thing? Nobody. How many people got that? And the only way you can understand that is if you realize there is no pressure in the veins. Yes or no? Rock on with thy bad self. Okay, go ahead. Take a break. I earned it.